the Temperature Wavelength Scan Measurement Program measures the CD spectrum at specific temperatures while also monitoring a specific wavelength at varying temperatures to obtain a melting profile. To set up your parameters, either click the Parameters icon or go to Measure Parameters. The Parameters menu box will now pop up and the first tab selected will be the TM Setup. This tab provides the temperature options for setting up a thermal melt. The Start End Temp specifies the starting and ending temperatures of the measurement. Begin by choosing an ending temperature slightly above either the melting point or when the signal plateaus. Data Interval determines the temperature intervals that the CD signal will be acquired at. The Temperature Gradient defines how quickly the temperature will increase every minute. If this is your first temperature scan measurement, 1 degree per minute is a good starting point. The wait time is the period before the next measurement begins after hitting the target temperature. This time is dependent on how long it will take your sample to equilibrate. The control sensor selects the sensor for controlling the temperature, which can either be the cell holder or the temperature probe in the cell. The monitor sensor is the current temperature of either the cell holder or the temperature probe in the cell. Prior to starting the measurement, you can either select to keep the temperature within a specific range of the start temp for a specific amount of time, or you can start the measurement after the temperature crosses the target temp for a specified number of times. Once the measurement is complete, you can either return the temperature to the start temp to check if the sample can refold, keep the temperature at the end temperature, or move the temp to a specified temperature. Selecting Halt Temperature Ramping will stop the temperature change during the measurement. Selecting Reverse performs a reverse measurement after an increasing temperature measurement. The hold time is the amount of time before the reverse measurement begins. The TM Parameters tab allows you to specify how many photometric modes will be measured, along with their settings. You can select up to four channels where the data will be acquired simultaneously. CD is the circular dichroism signal. LD is the linear dichroism signal. Both the HT and DC modes monitor the photomultiplier tube voltage. HT is the high tension voltage and controls the gain. Gain is the amount of current output for the number of photons reaching the detector. When a lot of light hits the detector, the gain and therefore the HT are low. The less light throughput, the fewer the photons reaching the detector and the higher the HT and larger the amplification of the signal. DC compensates for the change in the light level. When the DC drops, the HT adjusts the gain to increase the DC output. CD over DC is the same as the CD signal when DC is set to 1 volt. This mode is useful when the DC varies with the sample absorption and the HT is fixed. The absorbance can also be calculated from the HT voltage, while UV single converts the DC signal to either absorbance or percent transmittance. In the Wavelength text box, enter the wavelength to monitor the CD signal at. If you're not sure what wavelength to monitor, first take a spectral scan of your sample. Choose the wavelength of the most prominent peak in the spectral scan to monitor the thermal stability of the sample. The CD scale is the limit at which the CD signal can be obtained. The DIT is the digital integration time or the response time. The longer the integration time, the better the signal to noise. Again, a good starting point for selecting the DIT is 4 seconds. The bandwidth determines how much light reaches the sample. The smaller the bandwidth, the less light throughput and the lower the signal to noise, but you can achieve better peak resolution. However, since CD peaks are broad, 1 to 2 nanometer bandwidth is fine. Now we can specify how many spectral scans to measure and their corresponding temperatures. In the Spec Temp tab, enter the desired number of spectral scans in the Number of CD Spectra Scans text box. The table to the left will now populate with the corresponding number of scans. Clicking the Insert button adds an additional scan, while the Delete button removes a scan. Double-click on the text boxes in the sheet to manually enter the temperatures you wish to acquire spectral scans at. However, instead of entering all the temperatures in the spreadsheet manually, you can also select the Step button to enter the start and end temperatures and the temperature interval to acquire spectral scans at. 
For example, if the temperature range is between 20 and 50 degrees Celsius and the pitch is 10, spectral scans can be acquired at 20, 30, 40, and 50 degrees Celsius. The CD Parameters tab specifies the parameters for the spectral scans. Here I will just discuss the parameters that were not mentioned in the TM Parameters tab. The start and end fields determine the wavelength range for the measurement. For secondary structure studies, measurements are typically obtained between 185 to 250 nanometers, and tertiary structure information is acquired between 250 to 350 nanometers. The data pitch determines the number of data points collected at the specified interval. 0.1 nanometers is a good interval to start with and should provide a spectrum with an optimal signal-to-noise ratio. Selecting too small of a data pitch and you might obtain a spectrum with a lot of noise, but too large of a data pitch and crucial data points could be missed. JASCO offers three scanning modes. The continuous scan acquires a CD signal at each wavelength while moving across the desired wavelength range. Step scan stops the monochromator at each wavelength to obtain a CD signal. The step scan takes much longer to acquire a CD spectrum than the continuous scan mode. The scanning speed is the speed at which the data is collected. 50 nanometers per minute is a good scan speed to begin with. The accumulations are the number of spectrum obtained and averaged together. The more accumulations, the better the signal to noise of your spectrum. Now we can click on the control tab. Here you can select whether you would like to correct your CD sample spectrum with a baseline spectrum. If you choose to correct with a baseline spectrum, you will only have the corrected sample spectrum, not the raw sample spectrum, at the end of your measurement. You can also choose to open and close the shutter automatically. The Information tab allows you to populate the desired fields such as sample name, concentration, and solvent. These comments can also be displayed in the Comments dialog box before the sample measurement. All information provided here can be later viewed in the Information tab and Spectra Analysis for each spectrum. The Data tab allows you to select whether to automatically save your data, as well as to specify which folder to save it to and the format the file is saved as. Saved data can be sent directly to Spectra Analysis once the measurement is finished. You can also choose to save your measurement parameters as well as open previously saved parameter files. Now select OK to save the specified measurement parameters. On the bottom of the measurement window, the melting profile can be viewed in the TM Scan tab, while the CD Spectral Scans can be viewed in the CD Scan tab. To begin the measurement, select the sample measurement icon in the menu bar at the top of the screen.